Welcome back to the second tutorial of AGUD's new game, Aliyah Yakte Est, The Die is Cast, uh, focusing on the Roman Civil Wars. Um, last tutorial, I kind of gave a brief overview of the website, the forum, um, and what the game looks like. This tutorial, we're just going to look at the Options tab. Uh, so I've just loaded in the game. Um, and I'm just going to click on options here. A lot of new players, and I mean, frankly, all of us, sometimes we're asking about the different options um, because I, the game offers some options that are a bit different than, I guess you could say, other other games out there in the way you can sort of promote his, historical accuracy or not, if you will. Um, when you click on options, you have, you have four additional tabs, media, game, AI, and, and system. I have to, you start off in media on the far left. And I have turned off the music. Uh, music's nice. I just think, you know, for an, on YouTube, um, to be in the background, it's probably a bit distracting. Um, so I've just turned that off. You can also put it on a, a short delay or no delay at all. So it just goes, it goes nonstop. Um, sounds I've, I've left on. Um, regroup armies. I've actually never used this, but uh, I think, you know, what it does is, Basically, at the end of each turn, it's going to sort of put the armies in one stack, so they'll all appear to be together. In fact, though, they would not be together. This gets into some really detailed game mechanics. We're going to look at, at that later. This probably is not one of the bigger issues, whether you check that or not. Um, I just I leave generally leave it unchecked. Uh, pause after battle. Um, that is, I do leave checked. I like to... When there's a battle, a battle screen is going to pop up um, and show you the results. Now, AGUD games, including including this one on the Roman Civil Wars, it does not have real time battles, and of course that is intentional uh, because the game is designed to promote a turn based strategy game and not and not real time uh, battles. I think we all remember the old games of Rome Total War and what was that like and what that was like, and you kind of get in there and you can easily beat the AI by you know, doing certain maneuvers. And that's really not what this game's about. It's about you know, creating an accurate game that represents the historical situation well, and also offering a very entertaining and engaging experience uh, for the user. So I always check this pause after battle because I want to read um, the battle results as they're happening throughout the turn. Of course, if you don't check pause after battle, you can go back and look at the turn when the, when the turn it has absolutely finally finished. Tooltip delay. Um, there are a lot of tooltips that will sort of pop up to explain what the option is in the game. So um, you, none, low, medium, high. Okay, so what does that mean? If you have no delay, the tooltip will immediately pop up. If you have high delay, you'll need to hover over it for a longer time for it to pop up. So you can see immediately there, it's just pop, the tooltip is popping up to explain what tooltip delay is. Um, battle animation. It's basically during when a battle is happening as the play is, is being turned, um, you have the option of sort of seeing who is winning the battle through this sort of lever, if you will, going back and forth. And um, I just, I, I usually just, you know, I, I like to leave it on low. You can put it on mast and then it'll completely it'll completely go away. Focus on move. Again, this is during when the turn is happening. So it's when you hit end turn. What we're talking about here is when you hit end turn and a play is, is going on. Um, you focus on move. Do you want to see your, your units move or not? And how long do you want to see your units? Actually, you can see other units move too. You can see both sides units if you have visibility there, like you know fog of war. Um, so focus on move. I I leave it on low delay because I, if you leave it on high delay, each replay a turn can take a very long time. Um, so I leave it on low de delay just to kind of get a feel for what's happening. And then when the turn is finished, I look in in detail at all the different areas. Turn compression. If you check this, each turn will automatically be put into a zip format or a zip file, and that's used if you are playing uh, playing by email. Also known as PBEM, you can check that and it automatically will zip each turn for you that you need to send. Um, save replay. So there, this kind of you know gets sort of into some 
details of the file and say, hey, that's why I'm here to talk about these things. You have the option to um, save the replay of each pass turn. So the replay is the file that shows your units moving around and the battle is happening in real time as you, you hit end turn. Um, right now these are checked off because we're not doing uh, PBEM. Game, use Fog of War. I mentioned that um, I mentioned that in, in the first tutorial, and uh, it is on. Just I don't really know why you would not want it on unless you're kind of just really curious to see what's happening everywhere. Again, Fog of War isn't an essential part of uh, strategy games and really making a realistic and historical game. All right, now we're going to talk about some really specific game mechanics and your options here uh, for Alie Acta Est. Okay, activation rule. You have three options. Um, basically, low or not checked, middle check or high check. We'll call it low check, medium check, high check. So on low check, you can always move your forces even if they're not activated. Okay, what does that mean activated? This comes from the idea that generals and forces don't always move if you want them to move, or they may move slower than you would like them to move, or they're capable of moving. Um, so what this rule is doing is creating the opportunity for you to play more, to play really in a more historical situation. Now, kind of in the 21st century, in really games, a lot of people are used to very quick. Uh, you know, like you select this unit, you're going to move this unit over here, and it's going to zip over there a certain amount of time. In history, though, that's not really how forces work. If you're familiar with the American Civil War, you know that Abraham Lincoln was constantly frustrated that the Union generals would not move fast enough or would not move at all. So on one side, you have very capable of generals like General Grant, who was able to move very fast, and whenever he was able to, he really was able to move his forces when he wanted them to move. You have them on one side, and on the other side, you have a general like General Bragg on the Confederate side, who moved well, really would not move when he needed to move, or General McClellan on the Union side, who moved very slowly. So, if you want to play something a little more historical, have it on, generally most players, most of the expert players out there like the middle check. What this does, you can always move your forces, but if they're not activated, then they're going to move much slower, and they're going to have combat penalties if they enter a battle. I also played on the third check, or the final check, and this is really interesting. It's quite difficult. Your force may not be able to move at all, and they will literally be locked into place. Nothing you can do will move them for that turn. We're talking about each turn. Most players play on middle. That's that's probably what I would recommend too. I would really not recommend low because it's just unless you just want to play an a historical game because it's really unrealistic to be able to move your units at speed at will. That just didn't happen in history. So the medium, the middle check is usually what most people recommend, and it's what I recommend too. Delayed commitment kind of goes along a similar idea. Historically, in, in battles, units didn't necessarily engage right away. The, even an attacking general may take some time to set up, or may get nervous, or maybe want to scout out more time. So in other words, what this is talking about, delayed commitment, is when two forces do have the opportunity to engage each other, how long should they wait before these forces actually begin. So on a delay, okay, it can be from one hour to several days, depending on the commander's strategic rating. Um, and again, we'll talk about strategic rating later, but basically, long delay really said, well, I'll just read it to you. Units will not engage the enemy as soon as they meet them. And then delay on the no delay, units will engage the enemy as soon as they meet them. So you have those two extremes, no engagement, very definitely not engaging, I'm sorry, engaging, and then definitely not engaging, and then you have options in the middle. Again, this is they will engage. The question is how long uh, do they wait before they would actually engage in a, in a battle? Of course, 
in battles and a strategy game, this can have some significant ramifications. If you have reinforcements coming, that day could be um, the difference uh, between victory or failure. I mean, we, I mean I'm probably going to go back to the American Civil War for another example here. First Battle of Manassas, it took General McDowell a long time to get the Union forces up there and get the battle going. And by the time they did, the Confederates were able to reinforce from the Shenandoah Valley. So, you know, talking about activation rule and having a delayed commitment, again, these are going to promote, promote historical gameplay. Um, randomized generals, this actually, it's not about whether or not the generals are, are random, as in you're going to get John Smith or or you know Joe Baker. It has to do with the general stats. Um, most so you get don't rent randomize, slightly randomized, highly. Most of us out there play with no randomization because we like to kind of just play historically how the, the general uh, the general's abilities were. I have seen some with slight. Um, some players play with uh, low randomization. That's up to you. Um, my recommendation, if you're really into history, probably go with with uh, no randomization. So yeah, uh, foreign entry. Um, in so in this game, you have different. You have the there may be a situation where a a foreign country can enter the war on one side or the other, and then you have the option how difficult that is to achieve. Um, Normal, I'm sorry, easy, normal, uh, hard, or disabled. Okay, so disabled means there, there are no uh, foreign, there's no foreign entry at all. Um, most of us, we just leave it on normal. Um, naval box handling. Okay, so what what this is talking about is do you, you're going to have a, you're going to have a naval box, and in that naval box, you can generate um, income, or you can basically try to destroy some of the other the other um, faction's ships. And on the standard rule, you'll need to you will need to mainly keep them supplied, either by taking them to a harbor or putting out a transport ship or supply ship out there. Um, you have the option to just reduce that, where and they'll provide. Um, they're not going to use supply, but they're going to provide less income. Um, we generally, most of us out there like it on the standard rule, again, to promote a historical option. As you can probably guess, I like to try to play as, you know, as historically based as possible. Historical attrition. Okay, so what this is talking about is you, you know, historically you're going to lose soldiers from not just battles, but from desertion or, and, and sickness. Um, so you can the opportunity to just turn that off. Or, okay, so move. So if you're not moving, you're not going to lose anyone from desertion or sickness. Um, but that really isn't realistic. So a lot of us like to play with it on. Um, and you can see actually in the middle level, it's for the player only. Um, and that allows the AI to kind of get a little bonus. But you also have the opportunity to. Turn, opportunity to to have this set for both the player and the AI. Um, one other point here, on when this is on, you can only get replacements um, at depots. Okay, a depot is basically a large supply center. So again, that kind of promotes a historical situation. You know, if you're out you know, deep into enemy country, you can't just simply replace your losses. You need to stop and own some of a base. And I think that you know, really makes that really makes sense. Um, okay, extended pool. Well, first of all, it says don't. <laughs> they haven't uh, calibrated to use it. But basically, do you? It's if it's on. What if it's on the far left? It's just it allows the realistic historical allowance of recruitable military units. I think some people aren't going to find that's enough. They want games with sort of larger, larger battles and larger number of units and then they can turn it on and get bonuses. I'm going to leave it on the left in historical setting. All right, let's, uh, so we looked at media, we looked at a game, now let's look at the AI. Um, the AI is on. 
the AI ranking, um, you basically have four legionary. Um, so legionary, it gets um, oh well, it actually gets it gets penalty. So you're sort of getting an easier game. Centurion uh, AI does not get any bonuses. Um, Tribune, Tribune, um, it gets a little bit of bonuses, and Legion Council, it gets uh, a lot of bonuses. Um, I'll leave it on Centurion for now. Use all behaviors. This probably really gets in the code, but you're going to want that check. It makes a smarter AI. Um, activation bonus. Uh, this sort of has to do with what we talked about before on, you know, is your the activation rule. Uh, basically, if it's on normal, the, the AI gets a, a small activation bonus, means they're more likely to be activated. A lot of players like to play with that, and it kind of gives the AI just a little bit of a little bit of a, a little bit of an, a bonus. AI detect bonus. Um, so you have the option to let the AI see farther than you can see. In other words, its fog of war is reduced, and AGOD's recommendation is to, to play at medium, and what that, what that does is it allows you basically for the artificial intelligence to have a better understanding of where to go. Um, AI is a, you know, is a very complex thing, so by giving it a little bit of a detection bonus, actually you want it on, you want to hear the middle one, uh, medium, it allows it to, it really allows it to make smarter decisions and give you a better gameplay. Aggressiveness. Low, medium, high. It's recommended on the medium, and give AI more time. Um, I would definitely check that. You want the AI to be as smart as possible when you're playing against the AI. Just as a reminder, you also, like I said, have the opportunity and option to play against other players. The AGD forum is very active. I've never had a problem um, finding other players to play. I was recently doing four games at once. My, that was way too many. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get back down just to one or two, um, but yeah, there's gonna be a lot of people out there that, and if you want to play against a human, and the playing against a human is intense. It's it's a really intense experience. Wondering just what the other person is going to do, and realizing you could be playing someone that is super super smart and has a really interesting strategy. Finally, on the system tab, you can check on no winter map. If you're on an older computer, you're probably going to want to do that. Um, this computer here, I have this new, so I'm, I don't mind seeing the winter map. By the way, you may remember in the last uh, term, in the last time, I well, you may have not seen it. If it's winter, you have some snow. So yeah, memory usage, um, I have it on high and, and texture size. I have it on high. This is a new computer, so I can really max out um, its usages. Um, you can allow the game to load some textures during game initialization. I don't really think that makes a big of a, that big of a deal. CPU sleep mode, uh, if it's not, like you know, if you kind of hit that uh, Windows button, you're looking at something else, the game will slow down. It's what the usage it's using on your CPU. That makes sense to leave it checked. And error logging, um, I leave that checked, um, just in, in the case where you, know, you have a query or some query on something or you need some support. Um, you can send in an error logging file to the support team, and they'll take a look and see see what's going on. And it doesn't really add any, as far as I'm aware, extra time to processing the turn. Um, yeah, so that's that's the options tab. You can you can really well, you probably have a pretty good idea. There's a lot of there's a lot in there. Um, you know, I think I'm trying to give you some advice on, on what to do, but you can always play around with it and, you know, try different settings and you know, different people have different game styles and are looking for a different type of game. So um, when you do play PBM, you know, some of these things you have to agree upon with the two of you because obviously you need to be playing with, with the same set of rules. All right, guys, uh, thanks for coming in uh, for the second tutorial of AGAD's new Roman Civil Wars game, Alia Yakta S. The die is cast. See you next time.